I make, my job is to make pictures from deep space. I feel fortunate to have a couple of perks that most astrophotographers don't. First, I get to use a world-class, multi-billion dollar observatory orbiting 350 miles above the Earth. The observatory, of course, is the Hubble Space Telescope, arguably the most productive science instrument ever made. The telescope was named for Edwin Hubble, a kid from Missouri, not too far from here as I understand, who turned out to be one of the most influential astronomers of the 20th century, of last century. I can't really emphasize enough the importance of Hubble's position above the atmosphere. The clarity this affords is the, the entire reason that people have gone to so much trouble to launch the spacecraft into orbit. Telescopes on the ground have to look through miles of atmosphere, which dims and distorts the light. You can experience this on any clear night if you go out and look and see the stars twinkling. It's beautiful and romantic to be sure, but it's a great hindrance for astronomers. The Hubble Telescope has provided a gallery of stunning images. I might suggest that it has allowed us to reimagine our view of the universe and our place in it. The other great perk I have is to work with teams of uh, scientists around the world and uh, brilliant technical professionals who keep the observatory operating, uh, manage the data, and analyze the results. We just recently celebrated the 25th anniversary of Hubble's operation. This longevity is very rare for a space mission, especially one that's remained this productive. It was made possible by the dedicated folks, not the least of whom were the astronauts who repaired and upgraded Hubble during five space shuttle missions. They truly risked their lives for science. Hubble is part of a pantheon of world-class facilities making up an open source scientific collaboration en enabled by a technology revolution. Part of this enterprise is the Hubble Data Archive, which accumulates all the observations and makes the data available freely to anyone, anywhere. As the archives have grown, scientists have been able to uh, mine the data and develop new innovative techniques to answer questions that nobody even thought to ask when the data were proposed, when the observations were proposed. When brilliant teams work with great instruments, amazing science results. One of the most amazing of those results from the last century is the reason the telescope is named for Edwin Hubble. He answered one of the most vexing questions that astronomers had about 100 years ago. What was the nature of these spiral nebulae that they saw in deep exposures of the sky? Hubble was able to measure the distance and motion of many of these objects with enough precision to, de to determine that they were indeed distant island universes, as they, as they were called, much like our Milky Way galaxy, but much, much farther away, and that they were all moving away from us and, and each other. Moreover, he, uh, Hubble found that the distance and the, and, and the velocity that these objects had was correlated. The faster the objects were moving away from us, the farther away they were. The ultimate explanation of this, which, uh, which agreed with theories of cosmology at the time, was that the universe must be expanding. And that expansion must have started a long time ago in, a, in some great event. Hence, the Big Bang Theory. Hubble indeed reimagined the whole universe and ultimately inspired a hit TV show. <laughs> Let's look at a couple of examples of what Hubble has been able to accomplish. If we want to know where we've come from, uh, this image, the Carina Nebula, is a pretty good place to look. It's one of the most dynamic and complex areas where stars are being formed in our own galaxy. Our sun and solar system started in a place just like this about four and a half billion years ago. This is about 7,500 light years away, and this image of it spans roughly 50 light years. If you recall, a light year is the unimaginably large distance that light can travel in a year. So these distances seem uh, ridiculously large, but in fact, this uh, part, this region of space is relatively small and kind of close by, by truly cosmic standards. Nevertheless, this particular image 
is one of the largest we've assembled from Hubble images in a mosaic. It uh, totals about 500 million pixels. That's the equivalent of about 250 high-definition television screens. It's certainly a dramatic image visually, but it's uh, also exciting for astronomers because it shows us the entire life cycle of stars in a single view. We can see clusters of young, hot stars formed from a vast cloud of gas and dust not more than a couple of uh, million years ago, which is a blink of an eye in cosmic time. Powerful winds from these hot stars are blowing a cavity in this remnant cloud and pushing on denser material, material sculpting it into these columns and compressing it until new stars ignite deep within. We can't actually see those stars, but they are revealed by the uh, telltale signature of vast jets of material spanning across light years of space. We also see a hint of our future in the form of one of the uh, most massive and enigmatic stars we know. We call it Eta Carina. It has the mass of 100 suns, and it's particularly, in, particularly interesting because it's near the end of its short but turbulent life. Nuclear processes power all stars. They convert hydrogen into heavier elements, resulting in, in the building blocks of everything we know, including us. Stars do run out of their fuel, though, with dramatic consequences, and the sun is no exception. You've got to be prepared, though, because it's only a couple of billion years from now that that will happen. <laughs> Eta Carina's destiny is particularly spectacular. Because of its great mass, it will destroy itself in a cataclysmic explosion, briefly outshining the entire galaxy. And it will scatter its remnants back into space, adding to material that will eventually form a new generation of stars and seeding space with the ingredients of life. We are made of stuff that was produced in stars and supernova explosions from the iron in our blood to the copper in our electronic devices. Another example I'd like to show is this uh, grand uh, spiral galaxy prosaically known as NGC 1300. <laughs> it's uh, still one of my all-time favorite Hubble images uh, for the time being until something better comes along. <laughs> While the Carina Nebula we saw before was fairly, uh, relatively close, uh, this is going out quite a ways. The light we see here took 61 million years to get to us. If we want to get an idea of our, our place in the cosmos, this is a pretty good place to look. It's what's called a barred spiral galaxy and is not too different from what our own galaxy would look like if we could fly far away outside of it and look back towards home. This panoramic view shows the entire sweep of the, of the galaxy, about 100,000 light years across. Far-reaching gravitational forces have sculpted the material into the straight bar you see in the center and, and elegant, dramatic spiral arms coming off the ends. If we look more closely at some of these uh, structures, we see scores of brilliant blue clusters of hot young stars and pinkish gas clouds from which new clusters are being formed in the same processes that were going on in the Carina Nebula, which we saw much closer by. Also, reddish dust lanes like meandering rivers appear silhouetted against a population of much older stars. Hubble's exquisite resolution and contrast reveals, reveals structures, fine structures, well into the very core of the galaxy, which is a very bright area. Most remarkable to me, I think, are the many much more distant galaxies we actually see right through the material of this near, closer galaxy. We are seeing the vast scope of the universe in this one view, from stars within our own galaxy a mere few thousand light years away, to these much more distant galaxies, which are millions to billions of light years away. Because light travels at finite speed, the farther, back, farther in space we look, the farther back in time we're seeing. We're not seeing these galaxies as they are today. We're seeing them as they were millions to billions of years ago. The, the final example I'd like to share is perhaps Hubble's greatest legacy, deep probes of the universe that help answer the most fundamental questions we have about our origins in the deepest sense. 
starting in 1995, the then director of the Space Telescope Science Institute, where I work, uh, initiated an experiment to see what would turn up if Hubble could stare as long as it could at a tiny little patch of the sky that, that didn't look like it had any uh, sources in anything uh, nearby or, or bright. The resulting data set, known as the Hubble Deep Field, consists of 342 images with a, for a total exposure time of 140 hours, which is a veritable eternity given Hubble's wildly oversubscribed schedule. The area of sky is so small that it would take 24 million such images to cover the entire sky. The combined data sh did show some nearby stars in our, our own galaxy, but more significantly, it showed over 3,000 much more distant galaxies, the farthest which was, is 12 billion light years away. Think about the implications of this for a moment. If we extrapolate to the entire sky, that means there are 100 billion galaxies in the universe, each with hundreds of billions of stars in them. Follow-up observations with upgraded cameras extending to a wider range of the light spectrum have given us a better understanding of the overall structure of the universe, a better age for the universe of 13.8 billion years, and, and better models of the origin and development of galaxies over cosmic time. Yet, Hubble can probe even deeper because of a quirk of nature first described by Albert Einstein that matter can actually bend the path of light. Great assemblages of galaxies such as these contain vast amounts of matter, uh, lumpy matter, scattered over a wide volume of space. These act as gravitational lenses to distort, magnify, and focus the light from much more distant sources. These natural telescopes allow us to see objects much farther away than we otherwise could. Looking at one such cluster, Hubble was able to see many of these distorted background galaxies, but also was able to see one supernova, uh, a star that exploded very uh, brightly a long time ago. It's 9.3 billion light years away. It actually appears four times, in fact, distorted and re-imaged by one of the galaxies in the cluster that's a mere five billion light years away. Observation of, observations of uh, many distant supernovae whose discrepancies between their predicted and their observed distances have led to an addendum to Edwin Hubble's original discovery of the expansion of the universe. Not only is the universe expanding, that expansion is accelerating. In addition to the deep scientific results, Hubble has provided a stream of dramatic, colorful images of space landscapes that complement and illustrate the science results and allow us to reimagine the look of space. These images are a byproduct of science, using the same exquisite data sets to visualize the targets of scientific inquiry. At once aesthetically abstract, but totally representational. I think of these as landscape photographs, treating them much as a nature photographer would, uh, might, making adjustments to reveal all the details in the raw data. It's a combination of art and science. Hubble has taken, deep, has taken us deep into the vast cosmos and far back in time. Ground-based telescopes can see objects that were in the universe about six billion years after the Big Bang. Hubble has pushed much deeper back in time, able to see objects uh, a, a mere 100, 100 million years after the Big Bang. Can we push back even earlier? Even before the end of Hubble's useful life, NASA is building the next generation of flagship space science missions to continue that exploration. The James Webb Space Telescope will be launched in just three years with new, innovative, uh, much more powerful technology. We expect James Webb to be able to show us the very first stars and galaxies that formed after the Big Bang, to study the formation of planetary systems, and to search for the evidence of life in the atmospheres of, of planets around distant stars, and many other things. We live in an extraordinary time. 
we continually reimagine the nature and look of the universe, much as the scientific greats of past generations, Galileo, Newton, Einstein, and so many others. We continue to seek the answers to the biggest questions there are. Where did we come from? What is our place in the vast cosmos? And where do we go from here? Thank you for your attention. Thank you.